Hello everybody, we're here from the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee. I'm going to be showing you a quick tutorial on how to design a longworth chuck for a lathe. For those of you that know what a longworth chuck is, uh, you know the importance of it and how helpful it can be. For those that don't, it is still a great design tutorial showing you some simple geometry and what to do with uh, different things. But uh, in essence, it's two discs. You have a front plate and a back plate, and those spin uh, against each other, forcing uh, pegs or cogs, uh, jaws of a cluck, uh, chuck to move from the outer side into the inside. And so what it allows you to do is, for instance, this one is 10 inch. It allows you to place a 9 inch bowl in the center, and the jaws would spin and tighten down on that. You could use the same chuck for a three inch bowl for the inner ring and the jaws would simply move in to that point and tighten there. So what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be designing both plates uh, very simply. It's not a very hard tutorial to do and I would encourage you to do it from scratch although there is a link below that will allow you to download the DXF file and you could go straight to your program and cut it. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm using CAMBAM. CAMBAM is very simple CAD CAM design that gives you very few options. Uh, we use Bobcad, AutoCAD, and uh, SolidWorks, but I find that for the purpose of do the tutorial, sometimes those could be in a little bit overpowering. So how this works is simply this. you got a top plate, and you have a back plate. And I'm going to move this over into a quick, um, quick movement just to show you uh, basically how it works okay when you look at it it would look just like the picture below now I'm gonna rotate this real quick and you could see what happens to the two plates as I move this the two lines intersect and if the point is here it is moved from the outer ring down to the inner ring which is a pretty cool design I can't take credit for this uh, obviously, it's not called uh, Will's Chuck, it's called a Longworth Chuck because of who invented it. But for this video, we're going to be doing a quick tutorial, so let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is create a blank opening. All right, I was uh, contacted by a friend in Delaware to uh, make one. He's been a woodworker for several years, and having a CNC machine, it just became easier to get precise cuts that way it stays true center. All right, his lathe is capable of doing 10 inch diameter. So the first thing we want to do is create an outer ring, which is going to be exactly 10 inches because that's the capabilities he has. You could do this uh, as big as you want, as small as you want. It doesn't matter. All right, next thing we had to decide is um, what size face plate he's using. And he was using a three inch face plate. So I'm going to pop a circle dead center and what that will allow me to do is not go past this point. So I know that at any given time, if my lines intersect with that chuck, I'm going to have a problem. So next thing we want to do is uh, we wanted to design the actual travel path of the grooves. And in doing so, I don't want to go past 10 inches, and I don't want to go any less than 3 inches. So I'm going to put some safe barriers in there real quick. First one, I'm going to do it nine and a half. That means that my outer ring, the cogs or jaws, cannot go past nine and a half inches in diameter. And likewise, on the inner ring, three and a half. And that will stop my, my clamps from hitting my face plate. Okay. The next thing we want to decide to do is to figure out how many grooves we want. I could tell you that we've tried multiple. I've seen as little as four jaws, six, eight. I've even seen 16. Only on extremely large ones in excess of three feet in diameter. For 10 inches, we found that six grooves works the best. Now, you could change the angle of the slot, do whatever you want, but for this purpose, we're going to use six. The first thing I want to do here is to divide my inner and outer perimeters into six equal sections. And I'm going to do this dropping in a points list. And you could do it in your program however you want. But this actually shows me uh, what I'm looking at doing. So I've got six equal sections. Now I can make my grooves. The grooves are going to be slots that's going to run approximately like this. And as you spin the two plates, it forces the cogs in. So to get a nice, good, smooth line, 
I am going to measure from the outer distance of the inner ring, crossover center, to the outer ring. So I've got six and a half inches there. I am going to make a circle 13 inches in diameter, and you'll see why in just a second. I am going to come off of the outer ring. Now you can um, you could do this in multiple ways, but for me this works the best. So resize here. All right. Now you can see that landed right on the point, but I want to be precise. So in Cam Bam and all the others, you can tell it exactly what size ring you want. Okay. Now we've got this line has appeared. That's going to be the actual groove that I'm going to be using. So. Uh, next thing I need to do is get rid of all the extra stuff I don't need, like the little circle I just put there for no reason, only because it's a tutorial and when things go wrong, it goes wrong. So here we go. All right, what I'm doing now is I'm doing a quick trim, um, as it's called in Bobcad, auto trim. Uh, you, there's a whole host of trim techniques that you can use it's just, in essence, getting rid of the extra. So whatever method your program uses, that's what it would be called. So I don't need this line. And I only want one of these, so it doesn't really matter which one I get rid of. As long as I'm left with this. Now this runs from the inner perimeter to the outer perimeter. Now, there's a couple things that you can do now. I'm going to show you what we're doing and then show you a shortcut around it. So feel free to skip this step. Uh, if you know what you're doing and you can. We could do two things here. I can either go through and draw large circles on every post out there, but that would take too much time. So I am going to do a couple things. You can either copy paste, rotate it. Now we know that the rotating it needs to rotate 60 degrees because that is based on 360 degrees by six points. So as you see at the top of the screen, it says 60 degrees. I know that one is exactly where I need it to be. The other thing you could do, which I like to do the best, is do a polar array, which all programs have. And I need five more copies. I'm coming off a of dead center. And again, 360 degrees divided by six points is 60 degrees. If you have eight points or four points, make sure you adjust the angle there. So this drops in all six grooves. Now, depending on what uh, bit you're using and what size slots you're using, if you're using a quarter inch bit, then you need to make sure that this groove is at least a quarter inch. If you're using a quarter inch pegs or quarter inch uh, bolts to slide through and you've got a quarter inch bolt, then you simply don't need to do anything. For this case, I'm using an eighth inch bit, but yet I want a quarter inch opening. So I'm going to do a open offset real quick. Now, my opening has to be at least a quarter of an inch, but because the boat's a quarter of an inch, I don't want this dragging, so I'm going to make it slightly bigger. Uh, probably uh, 0.26 would be efficient, so I'm going to drop that in. Now, I said I was going to show you a shortcut, and I'm going to do that now. If I get rid of these, supposing that I simply made the first circle and open offset or grooved whichever, I'm going to get rid of that, and now you can see the actual slot that I'm using. I'm going to polar array that, so I didn't have to do all the other steps, but I wanted to show you what we was doing uh, so that you can see uh, whatever you need to make adjustments for in your program. I'm coming off a of dead center. I need five more copies, 60 degrees, and there we go. Now I've got all the grooves in there. This inner and outer, this inner ring and this outer ring, these are imaginary rings. You could go ahead and get rid of those now if you want to because that was only there to establish the points that we needed. Same thing with the inner diameter. This circle here, even though we're not going to be cutting a tool path, we need to leave that because that's your reference of your faceplate. Without that, you cannot keep this true center, and so it's very important that you leave that with the premise that you know we're not going to be cutting that, that we'll not have a toolpath. All right, guys, that's uh, good for now. What we have is the actual design. You have the faceplate opening and the slots. We'll pick it up in part two.